for you are a merciful God and a forgiving God. Amen. I've started a new series, amen. It's called Grabbing of the Hold of the Altar. Praise the Lord, we praise the Lord, hallelujah. Um, other partners, to the other partners, you'll just catch up, amen. Hallelujah, the word is fresh out of the oven, so in the event that you come late on the feed, no problem, you can still catch up, praise the Lord. Today I'm speaking to you about grabbing a hold of the altar. Grabbing a hold of the altar. So in every ministry, they, some ministries do altar calls. Because the altar in, in, in our place of worship is similar to the altar in the days of old, in the Old Testament. We see that there was an altar. They called it the brazen altar. And that is the place where people would go to sacrifice. And that is the place that people would go to worship. They would go to pray. Amen. It is a place, the altar, the altar is a place of exchange. Amen. It's a place of communication and it's a place of influence. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So we see in the word of God that that is where God responded from. So when you would go to the altar and you would pray, God would respond from the altar. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now this altar was amazing because when you see this altar, this alt altar had four horns. It had four horns. Amen. The four horns represented, 
they were for the worshippers to hold on to, um, for those that gave sacrifice, amen, to hold on to. Um, they were also for those that were seeking asylum, like just say somebody committed a crime or did that was sinned, they would run to the altar and hold on to the horns of the altar, amen. And by doing so, they would be they would receive mercy, because the altar is the place of mercy. And so when you're holding on to the, the horns, you are saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I'm holding on to, to the horns of the altar for your mercy. Praise the Lord and your forgiveness. Amen. So whenever somebody would run to the altar and hold the horns, no one was allowed to take that person away. They would be released. Amen. There was a release. And I decree and I declare, let there be a release in the season over our partners in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Today, I'm going to speak to you about two types of people that hold the altar. Amen. There are two types of people that hold the altar. And this is a word I'll be coming on on a daily basis to teach you. Amen. Uh, before we enter into 2019, let's work on ourselves, beloveds of God. Let's work on our characters. Let's work on our hearts. Amen. Let's work on our emotions. Praise the Lord. So that when we enter into 2019, we're not carrying any heavy burden. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm sure we now understand what the the holding of the of the horns is all about. Amen. There was a time in East Israel that there were three kings at the same time. It has never ever happened before in the word of God, but it happened during the time of David. David was king and he was seated on the throne and he was about he was, he, was, he had made his son Solomon king, but Absalom also made himself king. So there were three kings in Israel. And this caused a lot of confusion, beloveds of God. And as time went back on, there was a battle for the throne. There was a battle for the throne. Listen very carefully today. I'm going to speak to you about two people. And the first person I'm going to speak to you about is Abijonah. Abijonah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that when King David heard that um, Abijonah was also after the throne, that King David anointed Solomon as king. Amen. And so here we see in this awesome, awesome text that Solomon is now seated on the throne and he is full of wisdom. And there he is positioned by his father. But we see that Adit Abijonah also longed for the throne. He also wanted the throne. And so we see in the in the text in 1 Kings 1 verse 28. Hallelujah. He then calls uh, the King David said, answered as a call me Bathsheba. She came into the king's presence, stood before the king. And um, he's talking to her, talking to her. She bows her face. She walks out. Amen. Then he says, call me Zadok the priest. Zadok the priest comes in. He then says, call Nathan. He's calling different people, calling different people. Amen. And then we see here, beloved of God, um, that Ad Abijonah then asks, he says, ask the king. When he hears that um, King Solomon has been anointed, he had his troops, he had everyone together. He had already decided, I'm, I'm, I'm winning the battle. But we see, beloved of God, that in 1 Kings 1 verse 40, all the key people came after him. And the people that piped the pipes rejoiced with great joy, joy that, that the earth rent with the sound of them. And Abijonah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they made an end to eating. So here we see Abijonah is hearing the celebration of Solomon being made king. So he's so, so afraid now because he knows that King Solomon is about to deal with him. We see, beloveds of God, all his life he has been fighting and fighting for this throne. And now he's, he's afraid. He is so, so afraid because he knows what is about to happen. What, first, first Kings 1 verse 50 says, Adi Jonah feared because of Solomon and arose and went. And where did he go? He went and caught the horns of the altar. Remember what I said, beloveds of God, that whenever you are in trouble, where do you go? You go to the altar. We see that Adi Jonah said, yeah, 
if I flee for the hills, if I flee for any other place, he's going to kill me. The only place he cannot touch me is at the horns of the altar. If I hold the horns, hallelujah, he will have mercy on me because the horns represent mercy and forgiveness. Hallelujah. So they go back to King Solomon and tell King Solomon to say, Behold, Adijona is afraid. And now he is holding on to the horns of the altar. If it was anywhere else, they would have killed him. But because he's holding on to those horns, he, 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 there is nothing they can do unto him. Hallelujah. And so automatically King Solomon has no choice but to have a forgiving heart. Amen. Are you hearing power partner of a forgiving heart? A forgiving heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Solomon was not worried about what he had done to him. He is looking at the horns of the altar. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Where am I? I'm in the partners group. Amen. I'm in the partners group, beloved. It's just that I'm using my other page. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm using my other page to come live. So here we see, beloved of God, that um, you, you, you find that Solomon had a forgiving heart. After all that this, that this man had done unto him, he says, show him mercy. He wasn't looking at the wrong that this man had done to him. He was looking at the horns of the altar to say the same God that had mercy on me is the same God is that taught me to have mercy. That is wisdom, beloved of God. Amen. And so he releases Abijona and he says to Abijona, if you're going to show yourself a worthy man, not a hair from your head will fall to the earth. But if you have wickedness found in you after today, then you will surely die. And so King Solomon sent and they brought him down from the altar and he came and bowed himself before the king and kill, kill, the king said to him, go to your house. Amen. Can you see the act of forgiveness, beloved of God? So in, in, in 2019, we have to learn to forgive. Praise the Lord. Forgiveness is not only for that person, but forgiveness is for us as well. Because when we forgive those that have wronged us, automatically there is a release. Praise the Lord. So this is a wonderful example of King Solomon showing forgiveness and a wonderful example of Adi Jonah asking God for mercy. In 2018, if you have wronged anyone, ask for their forgiveness. Hallelujah. If, if there is something that is eating you that you have done to someone, be sure to ask them for forgiveness. Hallelujah. That is wisdom, beloved of God. And if somebody has wronged you, forgive them. Amen. This is, a, this is the place where you grab a hold of the altar and say, Lord, I forgive. Praise the Lord. The reason why you forgive is very important. Listen to the next person. So we see the story of Abijona. Abijona asks for forgiveness and King Solomon forgives him. Now we see the mercy at the altar. There are times, beloved of God, where you will be shown no mercy. I will show you and I will prove to you. We see mercy at the altar and the next story I'm going to tell you is no mercy at the altar. And why? We see, beloveds of God, in 1 Kings 2 verse 28, we see that, hallelujah, the tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned after Adi Jonah, though he turned not after Absalom. And Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord and caught a hold of the horns of the altar. Adi Jonah fled to the temple and caught the horns of the altar and he was shown mercy. But look at the story of Joab, beloved of God. In the beginning of the text, you will see that Abner, hallelujah, is a, is a mighty warrior. And we see, beloved of God, Ashel is also a mighty warrior. And so we see that Ashel is, is, is so confident in himself that I can, I can destroy Abner that he runs after Abner. After Abner said, don't come after me. Don't run after me. Amen. You find that he still goes running after Abner to what? To kill him. So as soon as Eshel gets to Abner, Ab 
Wagner strikes him with a spear through his belly and he dies. Are you seeing beloveds of God? Hallelujah. And this is the season. This is another nugget. Don't go running after things that are going to bring you destruction. Amen. There are some things that we run after that will end up in our downfall and end up in our destruction. And this is a, a, a lesson from Ashel. Abner said, don't follow me because if you follow me, you're going to be destroyed. And he didn't heed the warning and he went and he was destroyed. Now Joab was Eshel's brother. Joab now, when he heard that Abner killed Eshel, he became so angry. He was full of vengeance, beloved of God, full of hatred, bitterness, anger. He was full. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But there are many Christians, out of their, their belly is flowing anger. Are you hearing me? Violence, disappointment, discouragement. We see this with, with Joab. Joab is now angry and he's so bitter towards Abner. We see, beloveds of God, now he's saying an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. What you did to my brother, I'm going to do it to you. You see, beloveds of God, some Christians, they go for an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. They're carrying so much hatred and bitterness towards some, somebody. And you find, beloveds of God, not only is it affecting them, it's eating them. On the inside, something is changing. On the inside, they've been dest destroyed. So we see here that, that he decides, I'm going to go for Abner and I'm going to kill Abner. The same way he killed my brother is the same way I'm going to kill him. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We see, beloveds of God, that Joab then calls Abner and he kills him. He was so bitter. He was so revengeful, beloveds of God. Are you hearing me today? And David was so hurt by what, what he had done. He was so hurt. He says, this man, you, you, you brought him under the pretext that you want to, to, to sit with him in peace. But you called him to kill him. David died a sorrowful death, crying for his, his friend Abner. Are you hearing me today? So now, when David is on his deathbed, he says to Solomon, make sure that Joab dies a painful death. Once I have made you king, make sure Joab dies a painful death. Listen very carefully, beloveds of God. Solomon is made king. Joab finds out that Solomon is made king. He then goes rushing. To, 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 to the altar the same way as Abijonah and now he's holding on to the altar and when Solomon hears that he's at the altar Solomon sends his people to say go there to the altar Joab had a chance to ask for forgiveness he had a chance to ask for mercy amen but we see beloveds of God um, a better person and a revengeful person will never ask for forgiveness. Amen. That person will rather die than, than ask for forgiveness. So we see that he starts to shout from the altar, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. Instead of asking for mercy, he's saying I'd rather die here today. You can kill me. That was how much anger he had on the inside of him. Are you hearing me today? And what did Solomon do? He killed him. One asked for mercy and they lived. The other one refused to ask for forgiveness and they died. Are you hearing me today, beloved of God? Many a times when a, a, a child of God goes to the altar, the altar is your place of prayer, your place of worship. And many a times we ask ourselves, why are our prayers not been answered? Why is it that God is not answering my prayer? The reason being, you cannot go to the altar in bitterness and anger. Amen. If you're going to hold on to those wounds, hallelujah, 
You have to go with the forgiving heart. Amen. You have to forgive. Uh, Mark 11 verse 22 to 24. It says, uh, everything can be done unto you. The mountains will move for you. But you have to forgive first. Amen. You have to forgive so that your father in heaven forgives you. So you see, beloved of God, people crying by the altar. If you go to church every Sunday or Saturday, you will see people by the altar. And their lives are not changing. Nothing is changing concerning them. Why? It's, it may be because sometimes we are holding a grudge. We are holding bitterness. We are holding anger. We are holding unforgiveness. I know stories of women that have come out of relationship 10 years ago and 5 years ago. But they are still unable to forgive that person. Hallelujah. Who wronged you? Forgive them. Hallelujah. Who insulted you? Forgive them. Learn in, in 2019 not to take offense. Amen. Hallelujah. Learn not to take offense. Learn to forgive. Hallelujah. Learn to understand that it's not you. Praise the Lord. If somebody fights you, it's not you. Hallelujah. Just continue working on your on yourself. Continue with that forgiving spirit. Continue. Hallelujah. Be merciful. Because God says, I show mercy unto those who show mercy. Are you hearing me today, beloved of God? So never ever hold a thing unless it's for your good. Never hold a grudge. Never hold offense. Hallelujah. Unless it's for your good. Many women cannot forgive their partners. Many women cannot forgive their loved ones. Many women and men cannot forgive their, their family members. This is a season to forgive. Don't enter in 2019 the same. Hallelujah. Forgiveness, forgiveness is so important. Hallelujah. So that is the word that I have come to you today. To just to release. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you forgive, you are stepping into a season of freedom. Hallelujah. Even when you go to the altar and hold the horns. Praise the Lord. You'll be free to open up to God. Hallelujah. So that is my, my, my word for you today. It's either you're going to be like Abijona and receive mercy. Or you're going to be like the, the um, jo what's his name? Sorry. You are going to be like Joab. Praise the Lord. And, and be bitter and die. We're not talking about a physical death, but a spiritual death. When you are bitter, how do you pray? When you're angry, how do you pray? You see, you die spiritually. How do you read the word of God? Because the word of God talks of forgiveness, isn't it? So how will you pray? How will you pray? Amen. It leads to spiritual death. Amen. So that is the word for you, our partners. Let there be a release today in the name of Jesus. Enter into 2019 wiser, full of wisdom. Amen. Solomon was full of wisdom, but he gave people a choice. Hallelujah. You have the choice to love. You have the choice. Hallelujah. To receive mercy. It's up to you. Praise the Lord. So that is the word I have for you today, partners. Amen. Now, Elani is saying, keep me in an excellent spirit even when I'm insulted. I was watching a video, Noelani, of beautiful women in a, in a, at an event. Very smart, beautiful women at an event. And um, there was a performance that was happening there. And they were all seated. The place was beautiful, everything. And what happens, beloved of God, the way they handle the situation. The performer failed to show up. And then all of a sudden there was havoc. I saw an amazing thing, beloved of God. Those beautiful women transformed. The rage and the anger rose up on the inside of them. I don't know if you guys saw the video on, on Facebook. It's trending. They started to, to become so violent. Throwing bottles, breaking bottles, throwing chairs. Beautiful, beautiful ladies. Amen. They now violate, breaking things. And people are getting injured. In the mess because they, they can't see where they're throwing these things. Are you hearing today, beloved of God? Yes, the performer was wrong and the venue was wrong. But was that the way to handle it? Amen. So they went out storming. They went out in rage. 
that the men were calm. The men were trying to calm down the situation. The men were not throwing anything. You see? It shows, beloveds of God, that people have the, the ability to, to contain themselves if they want. Amen? One thing I can tell you, beloveds of God, is that your ability to keep calm can take you far. If you're going to be emotional, doors are going to close on to you. So many doors will close. Are you hearing me? You should be able to handle adversity. Praise the Lord. So they, they, they now have a reputation to say, Oh, look at these women. Is that how women behave? You see? Forgiveness, forgiveness. Forgive your partners, forgive your loved ones. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Don't take offense. Don't take things too deep. Many people take things deep, 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 deep. And hold them there. And it's eating at you. You see? So this is number one. As you grab a hold of the altar in 2018, 2019, go in forgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. It is done, partners. I will be back later to pray for you. Uh, because uh, the people were saying that they can't see me. I'll have to go on the other page and, and come live from there later on after the fruit of the womb. Amen. Nicole is saying, I need to be calmer and less bitter. Bitter people push people away, Nicole. You'll find that when you have bitterness on the inside of you, how many of us know, let me just put it this way, whatever you're feeling on the inside of you reflects on your outside. Did you know that? So whatever you are carrying on the inside, if it's anger, if it's unforgiveness, it can affect your out, your, the way you look even. So when somebody looks at you, they don't look at you through, not only through the physical, they look at your eyes, you know. Your eyes are so powerful. Your eyes show your, the way to your soul and your spirit. Amen. So when they look at you, it is possible for them to see their bitterness. Even if you are smiling, even if you are, are, are glowing and laughing, amen. It, it, it cannot be hidden. Praise the Lord. So if you work on that, you will see that bitterness pushes away. And, and, and when you become, become less bitter, you'll find people will begin to approach you more. So they'll come to approach you. Because we are like energized. Amen. We have dynamic power on the inside of us. So what happens is if somebody comes close to you, you, they, you will, they will either repel from you or attract to you. you. How many of us know that? So you'll find angry people. Not many people come around them. Is that true, beloveds of God? Hallelujah. But you, start, you find people that are at peace with themselves and calm, people gather around them. It is because it's easy to sense just by coming close to a person, you know that mm, there's something wrong here. Or, oh, this person must be somebody very nice. Amen. So it comes out. It reflects on your outside. Amen. Learning, yes, and learning to trust is very important. Amen. Learning to trust is very, very important. Hallelujah. Because jealousy, what it does is it, it can also push away a partner. So like if you, if you become oh, like jealous, it can also push away a partner. Like Nicole is so beautiful, isn't it? Nicole is like a supermodel. I think your partner should be je more jealous than you because you are a jackpot, isn't it? So whoever gets you, is, is they, have, they have hit the jackpot. They say, wow, I'm so blessed to have such a beautiful woman. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Deal with your, work on yourself, work on your character, work on your emotions, amen. If you just get irritated by any little thing or upset by any little thing, Work on yourself. Hallelujah. Urvashi says it's difficult to forgive someone who has wronged you. But I know when one forgives, it sets you free and you feel light. So true. It's for yourself. It's for yourself. You know that you are born again. Hallelujah. 
when you when you have a, a forgiving spirit if you remember that we were all sinners and God forgave us we also have to forgive amen Nicole whoever your partner is gonna be is gonna be so blessed amen just work on that area the areas you are telling me about work on them so by the time your partner comes you are ripe and ready there are a lot of hurting people walking on this earth you see them in the city center you how many have seen the road rage when the traffic is here heavy you will see how tempers flare people get so so angry they want to start fighting isn't it frustrations and everything but at the same time you will see people parked in their cars calm and collected facing the same situation but dealing with it differently you see in your house in your house in your marriage beloved of god the way you deal with your partner will determine whether it will grow the relationship or, or, or destroy it the way you answer your partner the way you handle your partner amen if you get offended at everything your partner says emotional if you get afflicted by whatever you'll find that it'll be difficult for that for that relationship to stand you can stay in it but it would have crumbled amen so let's work on ourselves working on ourselves how we talk to people even in the in the shopping centers in the the way we address people on the phone amen all that reflects that you are a child of god all that amen praise the lord did you did you get something partners i know many of these teachings they not too too exciting but they will change your life forever communication the way we communicate is is very important amen the way we speak to one another the way we communicate very very important Noelani says I'm always insulted by my co-workers but my patients love me and always compliment me why do you think so I've noticed like where there is a group of people working together there is um, what we call strife strife can some, sometimes come because everyone wants to rise above the other or everyone wants to be better than the other you find it in the church as well not only in the workplace even in the church you'll find that people find it difficult to work together somebody always wants to be in charge or somebody always wants to have the last say isn't it so you'll find that when you're working with your co-workers remember Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they had many people in there that they were working with, but they set themselves apart and they had a different spirit. They had the spirit of excellence. Amen. So what others were doing, they weren't doing that. They continued to serve in excellence. They continued to do what the way God taught them. Amen. Their character. You could just see. Even when they were thrown in the fire, the three boys you didn't see them offended and shouting and saying throw me throw me in the fire do it do it no they went in nice it nobody even had to carry them in they walked in by themselves remember the, the guards died while trying to put them in so they walked in by themselves without complaining so when you serve in excellence sometimes it can affect those around you and then they know that oh the way this person they can think oh she is trying to be good better than us or too good but the thing is you are at the same time giving them an example of what it is to serve in excellence how do i know that you are serving in excellence because your patients love you your patients always compliment you you see that is how you know because you have been assigned to work with the patients you have been assigned to these people so you listen to the the report of what report they are giving concerning you and here you saying they saying we love you and and they complimenting you amen so continue serving in excellence they are learning they are learning from you whether they like it or not or are offended or not they are learning it's a decision to also do the same 
Amen. If every co-worker was doing what they were called to do, there would be no room for insult. They wouldn't even have time to be insulting you because they would be too busy working and serving and doing their job. Amen. So just keep on shining, Noelani. Remember, for this cause where you raised up to serve those patients. Amen. Do we have any questions? Praise the Lord. Some people are so, so beautiful, but they are carrying so much bitterness on the inside of them. So much anger on the inside of them. You see? And if they are to release that, wow! What a blessing they would be to this generation. Do we have any questions? Learn to compliment people more. Amen? Learn to compliment people more. Learn to see the good in others more than the bad. Praise the Lord. So there are some people, they're always looking for the wrong in you. Stop doing this. Why are you doing this? Whoa. They're always looking in the wrong in you. Learn to compliment. Learn to, to, to encourage. Learn to build others. And it will cause them to change as well. Amen. Imagine if you have to constantly speak highly of your husband or your wife. If you have to constantly remind them of the wonderful times that you have had together. If you have to constantly compliment them. You see? The atmosphere would change. But if you continually pull out all the wrongs that they're doing. You did this and you did this and you did this and you did this and you did this. There'll be so much offense and bitterness in that house that nobody will even want to be to stay in there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is my word for you. And I'll be back if possible later today. Grab the hold of the horn, grab a hold of the altar. Amen. And make sure you don't let go. But make sure you are you are free. Amen. Of unforgiveness and bitterness. And then you will see your life begin to turn turn around. May God bless you, beloved partners. Amen. We'll be back later. See you possibly at midnight. See you. Love you guys.